right next to you got something in your hand ask him do you got something in your hand do you got something in your pocket do you got something in your life when God comes to you and he asks you to do something, do not say, I do not, have love. I do not have enough money. Because you are lying. Because if you can give God the little money that you've got, he can do something with that money. He just wants you to give him the something that you've got. Pray, Lord God, I give you my all. I know you will give me more than all. If you give God the something that you've got, He can multiply that something into a miraculous power that can move mountains. And when God transforms something into miraculous power, no one can stop it. He called that widow, the prophet, the man of God, called the widow. What do you got? Nothing but a little oil and a little flour. A little oil, nothing. She's saying, listen to human, human beings speaking, nothing but a little flour and oil. And there in her eyes, the little oil and the flour was nothing. But with God, if you see with God's eyes, you see great potential and miraculous powers. There's something about to happen. Nothing but a little oil and flour. Come on, this widow was at the end. She was desperately, she's going to die. Make the last food for her and her son and they will die. She acted on the prophet's word. You must learn, do not despise prophecy. When a prophet speaks to you, act on his word. When you act on a prophet's word, remember a prophet's word is not his own word. It is a word from heaven given to him, which always carries the power to change the events into miraculous events. I've seen great, great miracles in this church. I've seen things change. I've seen people who had no work being raised to counselors of premiers in this country when they acted on a prophecy. I've seen awesome things. How people get into jobs that they were not supposed to be there. When they acted on prophetic words. I've seen people's lives saved in accidents and being saved from being, um, being locked in jail because they acted on prophetic words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A prophet is not, not, not an all-knowing person at all, as something. A prophet only knows what God is showing. But let me tell you something the Bible says, and when the Bible says, you cannot change it. God does nothing without letting his prophets know what he's doing. Give him a hand. Nothing. God does nothing unless he shows it to his prophets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the importance of prophetic ministry. I don't speak about divination. I don't speak about a person who tries to know everything about your future. Prophetic utterance is not divination or giving you the detail of the future or the past. But it's a prophetic word from heaven. When it is taken to heart, it changes the events that you find yourself in. Into a miraculous events. It can change the little money you got in your pocket, the little flour and the little oil into a miraculous power that if you got enough vessels, you will never be filling, you will never fill them. Because a miraculous power cannot be stopped. The only one that can stop it is you. The prophet said to her, go and farm your friends, go and get vessels in which you can put the oil. And you will sell the oil and, and, you, and you will be free. And it will be enough for you and your son. She went and got many, many vessels. And she was pouring and pouring and pouring as, uh, at the prophet's command. Pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. And let me tell you, 
If she had 2,000 vessels, all would have been filled. You tell a prophet you got nothing, you see an angry man. One day Clive told me, I do not have enough money. I almost jumped on him. Because he's, he was a liar. He had money. If you got money, and you bring it to God, you will have more than enough. Sorry, Clive, but you've learned something from that lesson. You did. You will never say to a prophet, I do not have. I mean, because a person with prophetic anointing see the ability of God. And when you come and you tell you do not have, you actually make God a liar. He has given every, you will never, ever, 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 ever leave anyone with nothing in his hand. Never, ever. He's, he will not do that. Jesus looked at the widow. He looked how the people drop in their money at the temple. He said, Pastor, you may not look if we put in our money. Well, Jesus did. He was observing how much they put in. One widow came, putting in two copper coins. You know what the Lord revealed to me when I read that? She knew the scriptures very well. And she, now you can think of it what you want to. I know I hear the Lord's voice. When she was putting in the two copper coins, she was doing it by faith. Knowing and remembering the scripture about the widow and the prophet. The widow with the little oil and little flour. She knew the scriptures. She's a Jewish woman. She knew the scriptures. Knowing if that widow got, could be saved by a little oil and a little flour. God can do something with the two copper coins. Woo! She was not a foolish woman. She knew what she was doing. She was a woman of faith. She was putting in the two copper coins. Jesus said she put in more than them all. Because she was giving God her all. Knowing that God will give her more than all. That widow was not a foolish widow. She knew the scriptures and remembering what God did for the widow when she listened to the word that the prophet has given to her. The woman with the little oil and the little flour. She said to the prophet, I've got nothing but a little oil and a little flour. As the disciples said to Jesus, we've got nothing but a couple of fishes and a couple of bread. Are you limited by your wavering mind? Do you also say you've got nothing When that's something that you've got, you is presented to God. He developed that into a miraculous power that can change your life and the people's lives around you. In the name of Jesus. I'm not telling you fairy tales. I tell you the Bible. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I tell you, nothing is impossible for him who believe. David saw in the giant before him what he had with him. He tried to fit on Saul's armor. It was too heavy for him. He was not used to these things. This heavy armor. He was not used to it. As I'm not using to, used to a suit, you see. As uncomfortable I will feel in a suit. So uncomfortable he felt in the armor. He took it off. He went as he is. And he took his sling. Can that sling really kill a lion? Can that sling really kill a bear? And a big giant, a warrior, a Philistine like that? But when you, when you give to God the something that you've got in faith, you give Him the something that you've got in faith, knowing what He can do, He creates that something into a miraculous power, which will defeat your giants, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If God did it for David, he can do it for you. If he did it for the, for the widow with the oil and the flour, he can do it with you. 
If he did it, you do not know what happened to the widow with the two copper coins. I know. I know what happened to her. She got extremely blessed and even helped many others and helped other widows later on. What is impossible with man is possible with God. God said a rich man cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's easier for a camel to enter, enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the heavens. A rich man cannot enter the heavens because money is a strong power on which people rely. It is enormous strong power. People kill for money. They cheat for money. They end up in jail for money. It is enormous power on which they rely. A rich man cannot enter the heavens. It is impossible. Because you cannot serve two masters. But what is, in, what is impossible with man? God can make possible. And he's doing that. Give him man. I tell you again, it's impossible for a rich man to enter the heavens because you cannot serve two masters. And Jesus' command is very, very clear and straight. And that's why people, why people stumble so much over this issue of money. Anyone who keeps his money for himself cannot enter the heavens. It is impossible. It is impossible. Any person who's got a lot of money will keep his money for himself. He cannot enter the heavens unless he do away with that money or unless he use the money which God has really created the money for. And that is to be a blessing for the people around you. If you're a person that is blessed by money, it is never, never, ever to enrich yourself. Never, ever to enrich yourself only. Obviously, the person with the money will benefit. But the person with money is a vessel through whom the money come to where God wants the money to be, and that is with the poor and the widow, and first of all, the church of Jesus. Amen? That's why few rich people enter the heavens. You say, Pastor, don't say that. I tell you, it's impossible for a rich man to enter the heavens. Unless God make it possible. That's why I say to you, if you give him your all, he will give you more than all. Whatever cross you bear, God will give you the grace. You know, rich people, their money is a cross to them. They cannot carry that cross without God's grace. To be rich is a cross. You need lots of grace to use that money according to God's will. Every single one of you. Hallelujah. There is a rich man. Jesus tells the parable. At his gate is a poor man full of souls begging at his gate. He is rich and enjoys his life. Good wine and good food every day. And Lazarus is begging at his gate. The poor man die and he's in paradise. The rich man die, he ends up at the wrong place in torment and fire. We know that the rich man asked Abram, Ab Father Abram, can Lazarus just slip his finger, finger in water and come and do this to my tongue that I can feel better? He says, there's a gulf between us. He cannot reach you. Oh, can you, can, can, can you then send someone to my family to tell them? Um, they must turn their ways and that they don't end up in this place. If they do not listen to the prophets, why will, why will they listen to anyone else? If they do not listen to the prophets, why will they listen to anyone else? Who's the prophet? You've got their writings in your hand. Give God hand. 